Hello everyone, I am Pravin Mishra, your educator, and I welcome you all to your favorite channel that is a study IQS English. And now we are going to discuss the most burning topic of the day. So as you can see, a ship that has sank, a ship basically that has capsized. So capsizing of ship, what does it basically mean? It is a term which is used when a ship drowns into the water body, uh, ocean, lake, river, sea, whatever. Okay. So a Liberian ship carrying 640 cargo containers and 13 crew members okay, was about to reach the Kerala coast. But unfortunately, before it reached the Kerala coast, okay, it capsized. And the Indian Coast Guard was immediately called for the help. And apart from that, you know, uh, the Coast Guard took the immediate as well as the cognizant actions and all 13 crew members. Okay, so as we can see, okay, all 13 crew members, okay, they were saved, right? So no casualty has been reported so far. But now the concern is with regard to the oil spill. Has there any been uh, has there been any incidents of the oil spill? So as what we have got the answer from the Ministry of Defense. So guys, remember this is the statement that has come from none other than but the Ministry of Defense that no such oil oil spill has been reported. Okay, so no oil spill so far so far has been reported and Navy has been kept on high alert. Right. So remember, guys, if you have this news that Kochi has got a ship capsized or the coast has got a ship capsized so remember this news that is no oil spill has been reported so far right and this is the news coming from the ministry of defense itself and now the fact 640 cargo okay that is 640 cargo containers basically and it was having some hazardous elements with itself as well like the two most concerning part here is that is the presence of calcium carbide and the presence of furnace oil into the ship so the ministry has said in its statement that the only concern which remains here is the calcium carbide and the presence of furnace oil into the ship and now from the context of our examination, it is important for us to discuss about these two, calcium carbide and furnace oil. So firstly, with regard to furnace oil, so remember, it is also known as the bunker fuel or the fuel oil. So when in a particular refinery, when the distillation process is growing or uh, going on of the crude oil, so whatever the, dist, uh, whatever the product is left after the distillation or after the refinery of the crude oil, so the residuary product, it is known as the furnace oil. So is, as you can see, furnace oil is a residual production from the distillation of crude oil in a refinery. So when I have put the crude oil into the refinery, so when, you know, uh, it has been refined, so what we have got, diesel and petrol. So what the product that has been left into that distillation product, into that distillation process. So that leftover or that residual product, it is termed as what? The furnace oil. So remember, it is also known as fuel oil and it is also known as bunker oil typically it is very very dark in color more darker uh, than any other fuel and apart from that very very viscous as well okay that is it is having too much of the density as well because of the presence of too much of the uh, impure elements in it right so this is what furnace oil and now we talk about the environmental concerns related to the furnace oil so it can have a high sulfur content okay which makes it more viscous sulfur as in so2 now so2 is what a major contributor to the air pollution it leads to the acid rain as well as the respiratory problems in humans as well as animals right apart from this particular issue with regard to the furnace oil what we have got the next one as in with regard to the oil spill so what is this oil spill basically when from a ship or from an industry which is near to the sea or the ocean coast when they discharge the oil onto the ocean waters into the ocean waters it is literally termed as what the oil spill so it is it could it could be accidental in nature as well or it could be out of purpose or intentional in nature as well so it is okay basically an accidental leakage of petroleum products either from ship or offshore industries as the oil floats it is you know more violent right so our oil it floats over the surface and spread uh, spread across the ocean which creates multiple hazards not just for the marine ecosystem but for the terrestrial as well as the other ecosystems as well 
right? So the reasons of oil spills, obviously, you know, the ship accidents and secondly, the industrial leakages. Sometimes it is not just accident, but it is done out of purpose as well. But now we have got some, you know, uh, very stringent laws from UNCLOS to other uh, United Nations body. Okay, they have created like we have got the International Maritime Organization that have created some stringent laws or some rules and regulations that talks about the very uh, stronger level of punishments against the industries and its own if they have been found to spill up the oil intentionally into any water body regardless whether it is a sea ocean or an estuary or maybe a lake or a river as well doesn't matter right so oil spill reason it could be accidental it could be out of purpose as well now talking about calcium carbonate so in the periodic table it is termed as CAC uh, CAC2 and it is also famous with the name masala so guys, remember when it comes to masala of elements, so it is what? It is calcium carbide, right? So it is, you know, having some usage, which is not so ethical. Like for example, it is used for ripening of fruits like mangoes. And, you know, it releases an acid that is known as acetylene gas, not acid, sorry, a gas that is known as acetylene gas, which rips off the fruits like apple, mangoes and so on. Right. So how it is manufactured? When you talk about the manufacturing of the CAC2, that is the calcium carbide, it is, you know, the mixture of lime and carbon. So this lime and carbon is heated up to 2000 to 2100 degrees Celsius. Okay. And after this heating, a particular thing is produced that is known as CAC2. Now, it has been prohibited. Remember, it is a banned product as per the provisions of the uh, Food Safety Standards Prohibition and Restriction on Sales Regulation 2011. So remember, in India, acetylene gas and CAC2, that is simply speaking, the calcium carbide is absolutely banned. Okay. So when we talk about the further application of CAC2, specifically calcium carbide, so releasing the acetylene gas, first of all, okay, and apart from that, it is used specifically for the ripening of the fruits. And secondly, what are the health impacts? So it can cause, you know, irritation, weakness, dizziness, frequent thirst, difficulty in swallowing, vomiting, and maybe some other skin related ulcers, etc. Right. So a dangerous thing which has been spilled now where, okay, into the eastern uh, or the, actually the western coast of our country near the Kochi, that is Kerala. Right. So not yet spilled. Sorry about that. Okay, my bad. Not yet spilled. But yes, chances of spilling could be here. Okay. As the Liberian ship is a still, you know, sunk in our ocean waters. And now the concern is to take out the cargoes at the earliest possible time. Right. So the concern remains to the furnace oil. And apart from that, the other one that is CAC2. Right. Now we have the next thing to be discussed as well. The dangers of oil spill. Obviously, it is going to trouble the flora and fauna. Okay. It could, you know, disturb the phytoplanktons and the zooplanktons that are over the surface of the waters. And apart from that, yes, when the oil is evaporated, we know it very well, the oil is, we know, it, get, it, uh, it gets evaporated at a very high speed. So that evaporation into the airs that is exactly above the water body right it could provide you know some type of uh, you know disturbance into the birds those who fly above that particular water body so they might be having problem with respiration they might be having problem with the vision or they might be also having problem with regard to the uh, air congestion in their body right so it is going to trouble the aquatic as well as the non aquatic ecosystem that is both simply speaking. So not just the fishes, but also the birds that are flying above the oceans, they could get affected because of the oil spills. And apart from that, yes, it is also troubling to the economy. That is, you know, if that particular oil spills come towards the beaches, so it creates something that is known as tar balls. So what are tar balls? When oil is, uh, you know, uh, mixed with the beach sand, so it creates some lumps. Okay, glued lumps. Okay, and that is considered as what? 
star balls. So these star balls, you know, they affect the beauty of the beaches and ultimately that shall be, you know, disturbing the tourism industry as well. So tourism industry, basically it is going to trouble the economy as well right and yes it is an environmental hazard as if it is not prevented early so it might reach to the groundwater as well so we might be also having the scarcity of groundwater of fit to consume groundwater if not controlled at the earliest possible time so as you can see one oil spill multiple health as well as economy related issues and now we have got some incidences that tells us about the major shipwreckages along just the coast of Kerala. See, the shipwreckage is not a new thing. Okay. But when you talk about just at the coast of Kerala, so there have been multiple incidences as you can see. The first one we have recorded in the year 2000, uh, sorry, 1972, a Greek cargo ship named as Solimaria. Okay. So you can see a Greek cargo ship known as Soli Maria sank, okay, when exactly on 26th May 1972, right? So today is 26th May. So exactly from here, you can go ahead and uh, go back into the time 1972. Soli Maria got sank. Uh, then we have got in August 1978, the ship Good Fortune sank near Ezimala in Kunur. And June 30, 2007, a ship carrying a cargo of steel from China to Albania via Djibouti, okay, uh, it crossed, uh, it actually capsized into the Arabian Sea, right? So, 2007, 1978, 1972, but the most disturbing one is this one, the mystery of Kairali. If you ever heard about the mystery of Kairali, so it is just related to that MH370 plane that, uh, you know, uh, vanished from the globe in the year 2014. 11 years later, still, we do not have any clue where the Indonesian flight MH370 actually vanished, actually gone. So in that very same sense, on June 30, 1979, a ship from Kerala, okay, it went off and it went off. It went off and it went off as well from radar. That means it vanished. It disappeared and no one knows where that ship has gone. And every particular crew member on the ship has gone as well. So it was carrying some 51 uh, crew members out of those 23. They were from uh, Kerala only. And all of those 23 Indian uh, citizens, okay, onto the ship of Kerali, they disappeared. Literally, even, you know, after 45, 46 years, we still have no clue that what happened to Kerali. So guys, we shall be having a detailed discussion in our one of the uh, you know podcasts that are that is upcoming onto the ship wreckages related to the oil spills as well as this mystery of Kerali. Okay, so we will be having a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Okay, that is known as the mystery of Kerali, as it is something which is you know uh, which. Uh, in uh, instigates too much of excitement too much of uh, you know surprise as well that how come such things are possible though you know it is the matter of life you know 51 people and specifically 23 indians they are gone but still you know it surprises the human instinct that how such thing is even possible right so remember guys it's the ship wreckage it is not new to the kerala coast or not new to india coast or new to the world coast but the mystery of kerali is really you know uh, thwarting the human sentiments and instigating much needed curiosity that how is it even possible into the modern ages so guys stay tuned with the study iqs english channel hit the subscribe button so that you never miss any update from the channel and apart from that if you wish to connect with me we can connect on two distinct platforms on instagram you can search me with the username pravin mishra underscore 2107 and you can connect with me on my telegram channel as well for or for all type of notes content pdf etc that i can share with you guys is there okay that is study underscore with underscore praveen okay guys so you can connect anywhere but before leaving just please do not forget to hit the subscribe button so that you never miss any update from the channel okay guys see you soon bye bye good day take care jai hind jai bharat